The Lion. Thursday mornings I run, and last Thursday I was running like Hermes until I got interrupted. That particular sunrise, I woke up to light falling through my window like angel breath, and it looked so nice I crushed a handful of roaches into a pipe and smoked it. <laughs> I was part of the horizon, feeling myself, feeling on myself, you know. High masturbation is the way, and before a run, the only way. You work yourself into a zone of anticipation, feeling that orgasm evolve like an organism greater than God, building like the Tower of Babel, like the end of the world. That Thursday, arrival was coming quick and strong, and I was just starting to shake when I stopped, took my fingers away, got my sneakers. It's the easiest way to run up, warm up before a run, I'm telling you. And that Thursday, I ran like Jesus. <laughs> Taking the trail that starts at the end of my block, which runs between houses and blackberry bushes, I started at a real clip. Mostly there were dog walkers looking as pleased as puppets, and mountain bikers and old people. We all ignored each other, which is good and fine. I was in it in my body, feeling like a bit of wild, like a goddamn stag. And that's when I heard him. I was looking forward to the end of the run when I'd go home and arrive like the flood when I heard it, heard him, growling. I was on that part of the path where the blackberry bushes were as thick as pubes, where you could hardly see the yards and the houses behind them. It was a strange spot, it gave you the feeling like those bushes were moving in like a wicked forest. It was at that place on the trail I heard him, heard him growling, a lion. I stood there staring, breathing fast, fixated on that tangle of blackberry the lion was hiding behind. I didn't know why he was hiding, but he was there, growling like goddamn Zeus, setting my nerves on needlepoint. I stood there, shaking a bit. I kept standing there, waiting, the growling getting louder, wondering what the fuck he was doing there. Considered waving my arms, thought about running away, but I was curious. So I stood there, sweat running down the line of my back in a zone of anticipation as that growling intensified as he came closer and closer, that big cat hidden by foliage. But by the time that lion had emerged from that blackberry bush, I didn't give a fuck. I was coming so hard, didn't know nothing but myself. <laughs> Lube job part two. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren and I bare our teeth at each other. The crowd roars like a leviathan. Lube covers our bodies and our faces. We step closer. This ain't no kiddie pool and dad's not around to tell us we can't. My heart is pounding like thunder and I'm halfway terrified and exhilarated, but my eyes are locked on hers. Us like sea dragons, wings outstretched. Lauren's arms are bare and vulnerable, mine are clad in black spandex appendages of victory. I could break a ship in half. I feel real good. <laughs> okay, let me back up. 30 days ago, I read Joshua Kobus' bold italic story, Lube Job, from my email at work. The story was a feature on El Rio's Go Deep Lube Wrestling, which goes down every first Thursday. When I read that piece from my office cubicle at the College and Career Readiness office, it was like the first day of summer vacation going off inside my head. <laughs> Hell yes, I thought. I'm going to this lube wrestling. <laughs> Which was a whole month away, but whatever. I created the Google Calendar event, emailed it to my partner and my best friends, and my older sister waited. A Barbary Coast parlor of lust and delight? A giant inflatable pool full of lube? I had all the patience in the world. <laughs> Me and Lauren's participation was not so well planned. Three days before the match, we were walking down 18th Street to Herbivore, Lauren's new favorite restaurant. The last time we'd eaten at Herbivore, we'd gotten into a shin-kicking fight leaving the restaurant. I kind of want to wrestle, I confided mid-step. There was a pause. Do you want to wrestle, Lauren said? Uh. Yes, I shouted this. It didn't need more talk. It was decided. Lauren and I were going to wrestle in this lesbian sexcapade show, only we weren't going to be going at each other like hungry for pussy. 
We were going to go at each other like badass seals with sisterly surge with the weight of years of suppress, suppressed sibling aggression. Dad broke us up ever, every minute we ever tried to wrestle because he didn't want us to get hurt. So finally, tonight, Lauren and I were going to go at each other with everything we got. We both knew deep in our hearts that I was going to win. <laughs> that I was going to beat Lauren's ass down. <laughs> that at the end of the splashing, twisting, groping, and grunting, it would be me emerging on top, grinning, slippery with victory. The night arrived. I picked up Lauren at her new house, helped her decide on the San Francisco 49ers jersey. I had decided on a black turtleneck leotard, and we were out of there. <laughs> Got to El Rio way too early, but we weren't late, and that was most important. Lauren started drinking immediately, but I didn't because I like to be sober in times of majesty. <laughs> Slowly, El Rio awoke. Our friends and boys showed up. Hella cuties, hella cuties. Dottie walked around signing people up to wrestle, including a form agreeing to not sue El Rio if anything happened. <laughs> she gave us the breakdown of the night and told us we'd be the first to thumb wrestle, but the second to real wrestle. <laughs> we didn't really want to thumb wrestle, but we sucked it up. The show started. We listened to the crowd outside our small changing room littered with costumes and backpacks. We went out and thumb wrestled. The crowd was huge, the lights bright. I won. We left the stage. <laughs> Listened once more in the small changing room to the beast outside, to the splashes, the oohs and ahs as the first pair danced their dance. Then it was our turn to wrestle in the big pool which is where we are now, and I have never felt so alive, never felt so in my body. The crowd is roaring like a leviathan, the lube is octopus spittle, Lauren and I bear our teeth at one another. We step closer. This ain't no kitty pool and dad's not around to tell us we can't. My heart is pounding like Zeus thunder and I'm halfway terrified and exhilarated, but my eyes are locked on Lauren's. We circle each other like sea dragons, wings outstretched. Lauren's arms are bare and vulnerable. Mine are clad in black spandex, appendages of victory. I could break an oak in half. I feel real good. You heard me. I'm a goddamn tsunami of a wrestler. Ask anyone who's fought or fucked me. Ask a stranger on the street. I'm tenacious. I have legs like steel pythons and an ass that could knock the moon out of orbit. I can twist my body into startling contortions, and I know some Aikido as well, so I can reflect someone's energy back onto them like karma. You hear what I'm saying? I'm really good. I'm circling Lauren with my arms outstretched, and I know I'm going to win. <laughs> we lunge towards each other like crocodiles we thrash. The first few seconds are nice. I've cornered Lauren against a bouncy corner of the pool. I'm grabbing her from behind, and I've got both arms around her stomach. I'm bending over her. I'm laughing. <laughs> but the loop splashes onto our shoulders and hands and forearms, and I lose most of my ability to grip. Because Lauren's arms are bare, she's as slippery as a fetus. But the next few seconds are a blur. Lauren and I are grappling, and my turtleneck leotard becomes a turtleneck thong, and my booty is shaky. Cubes are everywhere. <laughs> I'm getting tired really fast. I'm really out of shape. I'm really out of shape. I think I maybe should have gotten drunk. Then, then Lauren on her knees flips me to my right and she's standing over to me to get some leverage and I'm yelling at her to not stand up because it's dangerous and you could get hurt, Lauren. And then her body is bending over on top of mine. I'm on, I'm on my knees in a half bridge using my left arm stretched out behind me to brace myself and my left elbow makes this sound. This cracking sound like a brittle-ass twig snapping. I've never heard one of my bones cracking before, and that's a bad, bad sound. <laughs> I've broken my radius into four pieces and snapped my collateral ligament in half, and on Tuesday I'll go into elbow surgery at UCSF. But it's Thursday and we're still ankle deep in lube. I have no idea what just happened, only that it's bad and I've lost. It hasn't started hurting yet, but I've lost. The sea dragon has fallen into the abyss. <laughs> the crowd is still roaring. The lights are glaring and Lauren has her arms around my waist. She's got me up against a corner. She's grappling me backwards. She's laughing. She doesn't know I'm beached and broken. I heard a crack, I say. I repeat this over and over. I heard a crack. I heard a crack. Thank you. Bravo.